Hello everyone and welcome back. Hope you're well and enjoying some of the good weather. We return to another episode of Legacy GPU Battles, and this round, it's between the HD 5870 and GTX 480. Both GPUs represent flagship single card solution from both teams, however, at different price points. This should be fun. The HD5870 was AMD's top dog that released in September 2009 for 399 USD. Part of second generation Terascale architecture, it was made on the 40 nanometer node, and the GPU came with 850 MHz core clock and 1200 MHz on the 1 GB of GDDR5 memory. AMD promised twice the horsepower and also lowered their prices to better compete with Nvidia. So we shall see. On the other hand, the GTX 480 released few months later in March of 2010 for hefty 499 USD. Part of the Fermi architecture, this GPU was too made on the 40 nanometer node. The core clock was 700 MHz and memory ran a 924 MHz clock. The wider 384-bit bus and more available memory should give advantage over AMD, however, costing 100 USD more and being 6 months late to the party, Nvidia could potentially lost many of its customers by the launch day. I considered comparing 5870 to a GTX 470, which might have been a more fair fight, but there can only be one flagship, right? So let's go. First, let's take them apart and compare the design. Both cards are dual slots and of a similar length. AMD's card was made by Asus and features this fake carbon fiber look. The black and red combination looks really good in my opinion. Those vents kinda remind me of a sports car. The Nvidia card was made by Gainward, but otherwise of a reference design. There's no backplate here, instead some nice nickel plated heat pipes are on display. I love the aggressive looks. Both cards offer good selection of ports, however AMD takes it with its full-sized HDMI and display port. In terms of power requirements, AMD just takes two 6-pin connectors and Nvidia needs one 8 and one 6-pin. Let's get the Nvidia card open first, starting with the screws at the back. The shroud is held in place by small plastic brackets, same as we saw on the GTX 295 from the last video. Fairly simple design, but I will admit, those 5 direct touch heat pipes look the business. Let's see how capable this cooler is, <laughs> I think we know it needs to be. The middle plate, responsible for overall strength of the card and cooling off those memory modules, needed a little wiggle to come off. Hmm. Looking at the state of those thermal pads, they are not in great shape and could do with replacing. Anyway, time for a little isopropyl alcohol and my trusty brush, then to apply fresh thermal paste and put the card back together. Let's then also open the Radeon card, starting at the back and by removing the backplate. This card is much easier to take apart and in some ways it's less complicated on the inside too. It's interesting how AMD are not using heat spreader on their GPUs. Does anyone in the audience actually know why that might be? Needless to say, Thermal Pass looks better on this one. Let's put it back together and move on to some actual testing. The 5870 under load reaches a peak of just 63 degrees and around 64 dB, it's not too noisy either. The system power consumption was at 184 watts during testing. The GTX 480 runs a hotter 74C, but still managed to beat AMD by staying at around 61 dB. 
the total system power draw was significantly higher at around 246 watts at the wall. Now for the benchmarks, and we start by running Heaven first. Here, the GTX 480 pulls a clear win and leads by healthy 22%. Overclocked cards followed near identical results. In 3D Mark's Firestrike, the GTX card pulls another decent and this time 17% win by scoring 3,411 points. The 5870 managed 2,907 points. And with those synthetic benchmarks over, let's play some games. Up we go. Feel this? Check your corners. Let's open the games benchmark okay. in Battlefield 3 and using the high preset. The 5870 managed to push 63 FPS on average and beating the GTX 480 by a small margin. However, the 1% lows were better with the Nvidia card. I can't really say I noticed any hiccups with neither of them. The game looks really good for its age and I'm happy that both GPUs push the game above 60 FPS at most times. I don't think I could get away with not testing Crisis and here the results were so close I can't really pick a clear winner. Both cards average just under 80 FPS on average using the high preset and even the 1 and 0.1 lows were really nearly identical. It's a draw. Task is to capture the, enemy base. the next game we tested was Crossout. The GTX takes on a good lead here and with 86 FPS on average it's about 17% faster than the 5870. Again, hardly time to complain since both cards were happy to run this game using the in-game fair graphical preset. And what a game! Are there any fans of this title in the audience? Let me know. We then return to second instalment in the Dead Space series and here the AMD card takes it. At over 200 FPS on average, I don't think we are going to struggle with either of the cards. The 0.1 lows were that much better with the GTX card, however the GPU usage was slightly lower. Perhaps that allowed the AMD card to win? Great results and great game too. From space zombies down to dying light and its acid spitting zombies, here the GTX 480 pulls another win by averaging 64 FPS. AMD card is slightly behind at 55 and looking at the 0.1 lows perhaps indicates the lack of GPU memory buffer. Fallout 4 at medium settings was another title where I could not declare a clear winner. Both cards around 42 FPS on average and very playable. Much closer than you thought, right? Let's try some new Apex Legends next. Into my first battle in this game and both cards were pushing for their lives. At the lowest possible setting I saw around 34 FPS on average. Both cards at the very near limit of their VRAM and interesting to see that those 500 megabytes of extra memory are not really helping with frames for the Nvidia card. Can't exactly call this smooth or competitive, I think it takes a much newer GPU to actually enjoy this title. GTA 4 next. No other way to say it, that's a tick for GTX 480. At nearly 80 FPS on average, the game run, dare I even say it, smooth? Hear me out. I'm not sure if I'm going mad. Ever since I played the game on the Q9550 and the RTX 3060 Ti, it just feels smooth. I don't think there were any updates to the game recently. Well, anyhow, great results with both cards, but the GTX card offered just that little extra. GTA 5 with mixture of mostly normal and some high settings, and we saw nearly identical performance that with the GTA 4. Again, at 77 FPS on average, the GTX card wins over the Radeon. 
Happy to see the game runs this smooth on both cards, ensuring gamers on budget can still enjoy it. Finishing the game testing in Stalker, Call of Pripyat. End point for AMD card here. At 66 FPS on average, the game run with all of its settings maxed out without a problem. The point 0.1 lows are poor with both cards, and this is due to the hitching of the X-Ray engine. And with that, the game testing is over, let's recap what we saw. Conclusion time, and what an awesome pair of cards. I like how with each generation we test, both manufacturers improve the process and together, with small refinements, more GPU horsepower is available. Today's testing was not a straightforward win for neither of the two, but let's award the points next. Scores in Heaven Benchmark and 3D Mark each give one point to Nvidia, it's clearly faster there. Another point to Nvidia over the quieter operation under load. AMD then comes back with better thermals and lower power consumption, both adding a point. Game Benchmark gives three points to AMD and four points to Nvidia. Finally, the second hand value. I paid just £19 or about 23 USD for the 5870 and 31 or 38 USD for the GTX card. AMD gets a point, simple as that. And that means that the winner of today's battle is the GTX 480. Congrats! But really, I think the moral victory goes over to the HD 5870, which was not only 25% cheaper on launch day, but also more power efficient across my testing. We all heard stories of Fermi running so hot that you can literally cook your breakfast eggs on it. I'll say it, I'm not convinced here, really. Going into this testing, I was sure the 480 will make mincemeat of the 5870, but looks like I was wrong. You might have noticed, we are getting near the 1000 subscribers mark, so a massive thank you to all of you for watching those videos and for smashing that like button too. I'll see you around soon.